Hey guys, in this video we'll be talking about singletons. So even if you don't know what a singleton is, do stick to the video and you will get to know what it is, how it is implemented and what are the uses of singletons. So this video is targeted towards beginners as well as advanced users so that even if you know something about singleton, it is definite that you will learn something new about singletons. And in the beginning, I'll be going through a couple of slides. So even if you don't understand any of the things which I'm going to tell you in the beginning, don't worry, just stick to the video. And even if you don't want to learn what a singleton is, just stick to the video and just take the code, which I'm going to tell you that how to create a singleton and you can reuse that code wherever it is required by you to create a singleton. So let's look at what singleton means. So basically a singleton class is that class which will prevent its initialization to only a single instance. That is, no matter how many times it is called by any number of places from anywhere in the application, it will return the same instance that was created initially by the class itself. So now let's look at what is the design pattern of a singleton is. So basically we need to hide the constructor of the class so that the application cannot initialize that class because the constructor is hidden. And secondly, we will need to provide a global access to that instance of the class which was created by the class itself and it will return the only and sole instance of that class. So this design pattern will solve problems like that the class will have only one instance. This instance can be easily accessible by any part of the application and the class can itself control its instantiation. So now let's look at how it is implemented. It is very easy to implement a singleton. We'll declare all the constructions of the class to be private. And secondly, we'll provide a static method that will return the reference to the instance that was created by the class itself. So now let's look at the first method that is called early loading. In this, we have a class called singleton and then we define a public static final singleton instance to be equal to new singleton instance. And then we have made its constructor to be private as required by a singleton class. And secondly, we provided a public static method that is called get instance, which returns this instance, which was created initially by the class when it was loaded into the memory. So as we can see that this way of creating a singleton that is by early loading is thread safe, but it is not as efficient as compared to lazy initialization, which we are going to talk about in the next slide. So what happens here that this instance is created as soon as the application loads. So even when it is not needed, it is instantiated. So now let's look at a better way that is called lazy initialization. So this method is appropriate for single threaded applications and not for multi-threaded. For multi-threaded, I'll be showing you in the next slide. So here what I have done is that I've created a class called singleton and initially I've initialized the instance of that class to be equal to null. And then as required by a singleton, I've created the constructor to be private. And then I've created a method that is get instance, which is globally accessible. And inside that method, what I've done is that I have made a if check that if instance was equal to null, I'll create a new instance and then I will return that instance, which I had created. Now, why this is not thread safe? Because if two or more threads are concurrently getting instance of this class that is concurrently accessing this get instance method. And initially, if the instance was not initialized, so both of the threads will see that the instance was not initialized. So race conditions will occur and both of the threads will initialize a new instance of the singleton. And that is why it is not thread safe. So to make this method that is get instance to be thread safe, let's look into another slide. So now first, let us look at the wrong way of creating lazy initialization for multi-threaded environment. So here what I've done as previously, I've created a singleton instance to be null, constructor to be private, and then the public static met method that is get instance to be synchronized as well. So what this synchronized keyword does is that suppose if threads A and thread B are concurrently accessing this method that is get instance. So one of the threads will be blocked until and unless another thread has completed its work inside this method. So what, suppose if thread A gets a chance to come inside this method, thread A will see that the instance was null, it will create a new instance and then instance will be returned to thread A. Now thread B gets a chance to enter the block, it will see that the instance was not equal to null, so it will have the instance that was created by thread A initially. So what is wrong in this method is that, suppose if concurrently two or more threads are trying to access this method that is get instance, one of the threads will have to keep waiting until and unless one thread has finished its work inside this method. So here what I've done is that I've created a public static volatile singleton instance to be equal to null. And this volatile keyword makes this uh, singleton instance to be thread safe. Again, I've created the constructor to be private. And then here in this get instance method, I am doing two if checks of instance is equal to null. This type of code block is called double checked locking mechanism in Java. So what happens here? Suppose again, we have two threads, thread A and B. Both will come here 
and they both will see that the instance will is equal to null so they both will come to this line that is synchronized singleton dot class so one of the threads will only get a chance to enter this synchronized block so suppose thread a enters this synchronized block and thread b is kept waiting here so a will see that the instance was null so it will create a new singleton instance and then it will leave this block and as soon thread a leaves this block thread b gets a chance to enter this block so what happens here is this thread b will see that the instance was not equal to null and it will directly come out of this block and it will have the instance that was created by thread a itself now the difference between the previous method and this method is that that only once the thread is kept waiting here and thereafter any number of threads accessing this method will get the instance created by thread a itself because on the first if check itself the threads will see that the instance was not equal to null and it will have the instance created by thread a initially at the very beginning and again i am telling you that this type of double checking is called double check locking mechanism in java so now let's look at the third and the final way of creating singletons here we are creating singletons using enum here we are declaring an instance to be of type of singleton enum and then to access this uh, method from anywhere in your application you just have to write singleton enum dot instance dot get value and you might be wondering that why the singleton enum doesn't have a constructor that is because enums have a default constructor which get instantiated the very first time the singleton enum is used so you can use this enum way of creating a singleton only when it is not required by your application that your singleton should be a class so guys this is all about this video so even if you didn't understand any word what i was talking about and you need to create your singleton the best way to create a singleton is that you can use this lazy initialization multi threaded way and you can simply copy this code and replace the class name by your class name and you can use the code as it is and there is no need for you to do anything so take my word for this that you just copy this code and you can create a singletons by this method and this will be completely fine for any type of environment you are working upon so guys this is all about this video so if you have liked the video do hit the like button and if you haven't subscribed to my channel do subscribe to my channel and if you want you can support me on patreon.com i'll provide the link in the description below so thank you bye bye tata take care and have peace mm -hmm.